Hello, hello, welcome all, welcome back to Remember Stuff. Uh, this is Remember Stuff Live. I um, hope you are ready for a great treat today. Hope everybody's having a great day. Steve, I cannot help but get super excited about this one. Um, how about you? I'm excited for multiple reasons. One, Penny Cook has so much knowledge, you know, just, just about a breadth of, of aging and culture change that it, it's mind-blowing. Like, really, we need this, this to be a, a mini-series. There's so much information. But on top of that, we have this amazing show coming up in just a few weeks that I cannot wait to be there and, and talk to all these amazing people traveling to this show. Yeah, it's going to be great. So uh, just a little bit of background. I'm sure the people that are going to be watching this probably heard of Penny Cook. Many of you probably know Penny Cook. Um, but just a little bit of background. She's been doing this quite a while. She's got about 30 years in the culture change um, space for seniors especially. Um, so without further ado, let's welcome the president and CEO of Pioneer Network, Mrs. Penny Cook. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks for having me. This is great. Thank you so much for coming on. So uh, we're excited about the show. We're excited to have you you come on and speak with us. Um, so just uh, give us a little bit of background. Um, say anything you want to say. You got you got the floor for about as long as you need it. <laughs> well, it's kind of scary to think that I've been doing this for over 30 years, let me tell you. Um, but I'm so excited to be here, not only to talk about culture change and to talk also at kind of your role coming up in the show, but to talk about what's going to be coming um, at our conference in a couple weeks. I can't believe that it's only a few weeks away, and we're so excited for that. But I am Penny Cook. I'm the president and CEO of Pioneer Network. And Pioneer Network is a 25-year-old nonprofit organization. And what we've been doing for 25 years is really advocating and educating about what we call culture change. And culture change is this common term that and we refer to culture change in the long term care and senior living world aging services world as a movement to move away from that traditional kind of institutional way of thinking about senior living and caring for older adults and really kind of changing the culture to move it towards people themselves to make it more person centered, more individualized, whereas people get older, they, they continue to have choice and self determination. And we recognize that everybody has the potential to continue to grow. And we really have tried to move that philosophy into senior living communities. So when someone moves in to another home, uh, whether it be an assisted living community or a nursing home, they have care and support that's really centered around them and their desires really come through and the care is based on what they want. So it's almost a more holistic way of looking at care and support as we grow older. So, you know, if, if, you, if you think about different cultures, you look at maybe uh, um, the Japanese culture, it's already built in the path for the elderly to be living at home, you know, living with their, you know, their, their, their kids, maybe their grandkids. It's like it's kind of set up and there's a path. In America, it's almost like you get to that point and then you look around and it's like, what do we do with mom and dad? Like, what can we afford? What? What are they going to go through? And of course, they kind of have in the back of their mind the possibly the negative experience of them visiting somebody in a community that wasn't, you know, didn't have the culture where they wanted them to be. So I think that I think part of that is 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 really starting to take hold in specifically Colorado. We you know we Keith and I go all over the place and. We see even the the communities like maybe the long term care communities that have um, uh, that are maybe a little lower end. They treat the individuals with so much respect. It's so much more positive than I'm not going to name any states, but we go to some other states, um, a little more Midwest, East Coast, and it's not the same. It's like there are a number. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, Colorado has really been one of the leaders in the culture change movement. Pioneer Network supports state coalitions throughout the country. And actually, Pennsylvania was our first state culture change coalition that started. But Colorado actually is celebrating its 20 year anniversary this year for its state culture change coalition. It began in 2002. And in Colorado, one of the differences in other states is that we don't have the differences between for-profit 
nonprofit and not for profit that some other states have. And I will just say our Medicaid reimbursement rate, for instance, for nursing homes is higher than in a lot of other states. And there are multiple reasons why I think Colorado has been a leader in the culture change movement. And I think the state coalition has really fostered kind of um, this approach where if you're not on the bus and changing what you're doing, then you're gonna be left off. And I think that's been really important. It's almost like there's been some sort of um, a peer competition in a sense to ensure that uh, that the communities in Colorado are very person centered. And, you know, it's it's not the ideal. And especially after living through COVID for the last couple of years, we still have a ways to go. We, we say that this process of culture change is really a journey. You never get to that final place because you always have new people moving in. You always have new team members who are coming in and, you know, things change as we know. So, you know, I think that Colorado is a leader, um, definitely in the United States, but I think there are other states that are leaders as well. Yeah, I would agree. I think there are others that are doing quite well. We just, uh, what we saw in Colorado, you know, I I was in civil service, a firefighter paramedic, and I was in a lot of assisted living, you know, a lot of what they would call nursing homes. We don't use that term anymore, really. We like the culture change. We like more of a home-like setting, not institutionalized. Um, But I saw some things that were, that I wouldn't want my parents or grandparents living in if it didn't have to be that way. So this culture change, while I know it is slow, and it is, it's going to be never-ending because everything is dynamic. You can't just get to a place of complacency. It's just going to have to continue to evolve. Um, I wish it would happen a little faster, um, as most people did. In the medical industry in general and in, and in, this, kind of, in this kind of setting, change is not always welcomed. You know, so you really have to um, foster, you know, what the, what the purpose of it is. And you're right. I think that every person needs to have a reason to wake up every day, not just have a place to be wait, awaiting for the, the end of day. So um, I think it's fantastic. But I have a question for you, um, if it's all right. I'll start with the first one. Um, I just was wondering, you know, what happened to you or did something happen to you personally? Did you have a family member? to get you involved in, in senior living and in the culture change? Well, yes. I mean, I feel like this work has been part of my life for a very long time, um, even before those 30 years. And a lot of it is because when I grew up, I grew up in a small town, a small city in upstate New York, Binghamton, New York. And I was fortunate to have all four of my grandparents living around me and also their family members. So some of them siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins. I had a lot of older people around me growing up. And my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, actually cared for me while my parents worked um, before I started school. And one of the interesting things about that is, and I, I know it now, I didn't know it then, is she really taught me this beautiful way of growing older. You know, as she grew older, she had some limitations that happened. She had some physical impairments. She had some cognitive decline. But instead of that stopping her from doing things, she changed the way she did things. And she just did things differently. And kudos to my family, they kind of gathered around her to support her, to continue to do the things that she loved to do. And so I had these beautiful role models in my life about teaching me how to grow older, teaching me how to age. But one of the other things that happened to me is I was around, because I had so many older people in my life, I was around hospitals a lot. I went to visit people in hospitals. I went to visit people family members in nursing homes. And one of the things I realized is that in the healthcare system and definitely in the long-term care system, we tend to label people. We treat people for their illness or for for their condition. And we never historically have not gotten their input on how they wanted to be cared for and supported. And that kind of resonated with me from a very early age. And I'll tell you, I wanted to be a doctor. Um, My life took a change in course because my father passed away when I was in college. And that really was life changing for me in many different ways. I was with him when he died um, and it changed the course of my life. I knew I wanted to work in healthcare, but 
I decided to become a social worker and kind of go about it in that way. And my first job was in a hospital. And one of the things I realized is that not everyone had the experience I did growing up. Not everyone valued growing older. Not everyone saw kind of the individual as the center of care. And so I almost feel like I've made it my life's mission to really help people grow older in a way that is comfortable for them, but also respected by society. And I've taken that into my work in long-term care and senior living as well. Wow, that's really, really wonderful. So you had a purpose probably before you even realized it. I think I did. Exactly right. Yeah. So, um, well, so you kind of answered my next question was, what does culture change me to you? So I think you've probably somewhat gotten through that one, unless there's anything you'd like to add, like, what does it mean to you? Well, I really think that this idea of culture change is just really changing how we view people when they need care and support. And that can be at any age, really looking at people as individuals. You know, one of the first, Pioneer Network has a set of values and principles. And the first one is to know each person. And when you think about knowing each person, to me, that's the essence of culture change. Because when you know someone deeply, you know what they desire. You know what's important to them. You know the kind of care and support that they want around them. And so I think to me that truly is the foundational aspect of culture change is to know each person. And then along with that are relationships. It's hard to know someone if you don't have a relationship with them. And I just think that's so important in all aspects of society. I'll just lastly say about that, that I really believe that when you know each person, it breaks down barriers. And I really think that's the antidote to so many of the isms that we have in our culture. If we know somebody as an individual, you know, it's it, it's hard to have an ism about them. Sure. You know, that that that's really a beautiful thing. You know, the um, I think once you you shed away all the what you think a person is and you start talking to them. And as soon as you find that one little kernel that you have in common, all of a sudden, all bets are off on everything else. You're like. Mm-hmm. Wow, you used to collect baseball cards? Did you do this? Oh, I used to be a teacher. Oh, wow, what was your curriculum? I mean, it it that's where we need to get to, you know. And and um, I I think we're getting there. And we and I think part of part of um like on remember stuff side, part of our culture change that we're trying to really really push forward and are very aggressive about how we're doing it on the tech side like really getting into what we work with multiple universities on things that are pretty pretty uh inspiring especially inspiring to us but the technology you know there are a lot of communities they have zero technology or very limited technology so they want to know I, i remember um right before covid hit we went out on the road, my mom and I, to a bunch of of um, um, a, a bunch of events from San Diego down to, to to Orlando, Florida, and we went to these expos and we we had our boost, we we had all that great stuff. But people kept asking, like, what is the technology device going to look like in the room? You know, is it a TV? Is it a set top box? Is it a computer? Is it a VR headset? I mean, it, it goes across the gamut. And we wrestled with that because we didn't want to be the ones that brought the technology in. We wanted to be able to use our, put our, you know, our software onto something, but there isn't something. So now we're where we're at, you know, because of, of those questions, you know, years ago of how does this look? And then all of a sudden when People think of technology, sometimes they think of it as cold, you know, and there's, there's ours is we want you to connect with people that are like-minded. We want you to, to send a, a letter. We have something called acts of kindness where you actually can send out, you know, a, a postcard to a, um, a veteran someplace, you know, you, you have that purpose built in. So anyway, it, it's such an exciting time and talking about exciting times. So you have a new partnership, a new alliance um, with the greenhouse. Could you talk a little bit about that and how, how that's going to make your position even stronger? Sure. We have a new alliance with the Greenhouse Project. And for those people who aren't familiar with the Greenhouse Project, it's an organization that's really been around since 2003. And one of the founders of Pioneer Network, we actually had 25, um, but one of the founders was Dr. Bill Thomas, who also founded the Eden Alternative. And Dr. Thomas, Bill also 
founded this concept of the greenhouse model. And the greenhouse model is a small house model for nursing homes and assisted living communities. So usually no more than 12 residents who are living in one house. Every resident has their own room, their own bathroom. There's a shared common area, um, a shared dining table, shared kitchen, shared living room. It's really a beautiful model um, of creating community. And so I've always called the greenhouse project one of our sister organizations because they have this such similar foundational principles and we have this shared history but we've we've each kind of had our niche one of the things we've realized though i think in the past couple years is that we are better in partnership and we can be better together so the greenhouse project brings a structure to Pioneer Network. Pioneer Network brings this very inclusive network to the Greenhouse Project. And when we combine forces, what our goal is, is really to be that central address for culture change. And so no matter where someone is on their on their journey of culture change, maybe they're a very traditional nursing home and they just want some education and training. We wanna be there to help provide them with that. Maybe they wanna go to the other end of the spectrum and it's an organization that wants to build this new model, the greenhouse model, we can help them with that too. So it's not just about the greenhouse model, it's really just increasing that spectrum of services and support for organizations, really to help them wherever they are on their culture change journey. So it's not just one plus one equals two, I almost think of it as one plus one equals 10, because there's this exponential impact that I think we're gonna have. And I think the other exciting part of it is that we really wanna be an incubator for new models. You know, in the past two and a half years, we've seen that we can't continue to do things the same way, especially in light of COVID. And so we want to be there to help organizations develop new models of how to care for and support people as they grow older. Wow, that's yeah. great. That's so amazing. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. So you, you have an upcoming event um, with the Greenhouse Project, um, the conference. Uh, I guess it, it's, the, it's called the New Culture of aging. And my question is, why is this conference so important? Yeah. Well, I think it's very, it's, it's always been very important, but I think it's even more important right now. You know, as I, as I mentioned, we have lived through now two and a half years of COVID related issues, and we're still experiencing that. And, you know, I think that in some ways people wonder if culture change has taken a step back. And I say that because in COVID, we had these mandates that we were that, that were in place. You know, residents didn't have a lot of choice about what they could do or what they couldn't do, who they could see, who, who they couldn't see, all of those sorts of things. And so I think this conference is bringing people together again who have those shared values who really have that like mind that we need to do things differently. And it's not starting over because we can't negate all the progress that we've made over the past 20, 30, 40 years. But I think it's just kind of reaffirming what we've already known. And some of the lessons in COVID have been things that we've been talking about for so long, and we're gonna talk about those things at the conference. So for instance, traditional nursing homes were built with multiple people living in one room. Well, that doesn't really help infection prevention as we've learned. Um, so all these different things, right? Sharing a bathroom, all those things. So I think that so many of these things we've talked about, we're gonna talk about more at the conference about, okay, how do we operational the, operationalize these things now? considering all the challenges that are currently in place. So I think it's a time that people can gather once again and really kind of see what is that future going to bring. I mean, some of those things we talked about maybe three years ago aren't applicable today, but new things are. So I think this conference gives us all an opportunity, not only to learn, but also, and I think this is so important in the work that we do to network with each other, to really get to know each other again, to introduce people, to introduce our attendees to new products that maybe they don't know about, which is where you come in with Remember stuff as well. You know, we see our partners, and as you know, it, the, we're, we're calling our partners solution partners. We're throwing the exhibitor phrase out the window. But but we feel that we want our attendees to know about what products and services can support 
the journey that they're on. And I think that that's so important. You know, I, I believe that in this movement, leave your hat at the door. We're all here for the same reason. So let's get to know each other. Let's learn from each other. It doesn't matter whether you're, you know, providing a service or whether you're the recipient of that service. We all need each other. And that's what this conference is meant to be. And I have a feeling that a lot of a lot of um, the partners that were you're working with and that we're going to meet as as well as everybody else at the conference, I think these companies have a, a lot more open mind. Like they they want to be part of this. Like we don't go. There isn't a day that goes by at Remember Stuff that we're not thinking about three people. We're thinking about the individual. We're thinking about the staff, and we're thinking about the friends and family. And and we're creating this product not to become a trillionaire. We're, we're creating and putting this money in there because my grandma went through this. I saw every freaking stage of this all the way to her last breath. And it affected me so much that I knew that I, we had to do something to really push this. And that was really the motivation on my side. And my mom, of course, um, the, the CEO of Remember Stuff, she's been pushing for this for a long time. And, and I think the time is now. And, and I look at COVID, although set us back a little bit, um, it allowed us to work more on the technology because we couldn't do a lot of things. But I, I think now that we know what happened with COVID um, and the ramifications of that, that there are solutions to help in the future. Like, okay, something is going to happen again. Hopefully never like COVID. But when it does, this is the route we go. It's not going to catch us off guard. We've been through it. We know. So... Yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you that it's, I'm really excited to meet people. That you're gonna, we're going to learn things that we didn't realize. We're gonna we're gonna learn new terminology. We're gonna learn, you know, um, upgraded standards of care. Um, and I'm just really interested and excited to meet a lot of these people and get their ideas. Hopefully, we can have some of them sit down and put them on video and tell us about themselves. So, super excited to be there. Absolutely, cannot wait. So. Yeah, I think so too. And I think the one thing, and this has been from the very beginning, you know, Pioneer Network has held conferences for over 20 years now. And even in the beginning, it was the intent of the founders that we gather together to learn from each other. And it doesn't matter what your position is. And I think this is so cool. This is what was started at the first conferences, and it's still true today, that unlike other conferences, we don't put positions on people's name tags. Because you know what? You're as likely to learn the greatest information from a CNA as you could learn from a CEO. And that's what's so cool. This is a conference where you level the playing field. And it's the same thing with our attendees and our solution partners. We all can learn from each other. And I'm so glad that you're both excited to do that at our event. Oh, super. I can't wait. So um, did you had a, you had another one, I thought, Steve. Oh, well, you kind of answered it a, a little bit, but I think you see this as dynamically growing. Um, one of my questions was going to be, you know, how do you see this five years from now? But like, what is the perfect world five years from now? But it's probably hard to even get a snapshot of like, how is it going to look? Do you have any thoughts? Yes. I mean, I think that one of the things that we're probably going to see are these new models of how to care for people. And actually, I was just reading an article this morning, and I don't know if you saw it, but it was talking about a hybrid model between assisted living and nursing home. And you know, who knows where that might go, but I do think you're gonna see new models in the future coming up of how we care and support people. I think you're gonna see more communal living models. I just think that that's where things are going. Because you know what? Even though we have made tremendous progress over the last 30 years, and I always use the example that, you know, we used to tie people in chairs, we used to tie people in beds, whether they were in a hospital or a nursing home. You know, we don't do that as much anymore, thank goodness, and especially not in the senior living side of things. Um, so we've made tremendous progress, but I think there's so much more we can do. And I think that that's what these next five years are going to bring along with technology. You know, the, the world of aging, I think, has it was 
a little behind before in adopting technology. And I think that's one of the things that you have probably found in your work as well. But I think we've sped that up a little bit. If there's, if there's silver linings to the pandemic, that's definitely one of them, is more acceptance of technology. And I think we're going to see that role increase. Number one, because we're probably going to have to, you know, just with some of the staffing issues we have and things like that. And number two, we're just realizing that there are, as you were talking about, warm, comfortable, person-centered ways that we can use technology. Technology is not a one-size-fits-all approach either. So I think that that's what's going to be another part of the innovation in the next five years. I like that. Great answer. Yeah, I like fantastic. it. Um, well, we like to be a part of it. Hopefully, we're around for it. Um, you know, one thing that I, I liked, I would like to see is um, I, I've noticed as my grandparents, they retired. I had one grandparent that just retired and really didn't do much aside from maybe watch TV. Um, and then I had another grandparent who gardened, who fished, who did all kinds of things. And it's, it's really amazing. The one who continued to learn and do and had, he had a purpose in his life, as opposed to the other one, the decline in health was, was rather quick comparatively. So I think if um, staying active is obviously important, but if we can continue to learn at any age, um, and it doesn't matter what you want to learn, but I think if you can just keep the mind going, keep the body going, I would like to see more of that in, um, in long-term care for sure. Definitely so. You know, that sense of meaning and purpose, and I can't remember which one of you said it, but, you know, what makes a person, any of us at any age, want to get up in the morning? You know, what gives us that drive? What fuels us? What gives us that ability to get lost for that, you know, 30 minutes, 60 minutes and something? I think that that's where we really need to get to know people and really help to support them to do that, to have that overall sense of well-being. Yeah, Murder, She Wrote doesn't quite cut it, <laughs> it anymore. It's fun to watch a little bit, but you just can't do it all day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Day. That's that's. Yeah. Well, we have something special to show you today. Yeah. So you are going to be the first person, and of course, everybody watching this, yeah. to see something we're going to release at the show. It's one of seven tech items that we've been working in top secret. This is in our um, our Skunk Works area of the company, yeah. uh, which is kind of us. Uh -huh. um, so if you want to hit the graphic, so this is our new um, way to visually see how a person is doing on a cognitive level, on a mood level, and then on a purpose level. And each one of these sides of the flame, called it, the whole flame is called Turin, gives not only the, the, the staff a quick look, because it's on our system, a quick look at this is where this person's at, the person themselves can see where they're at. So if they start seeing that that part of, of um, what they're doing is like, okay, maybe they're not as, as the, the purpose side, they're not as active and they're not, you know, doing some of these things, they can, they can move, you know, that flame to the other color um, by Roscoe, our, our um, avatar that comes up and and talks which keith can bring up here this is our little avatar that we have that that uh uh communicates to, to uh the individuals but we're able to help them through the gamification of our system to feel like they have purpose to take this quiz to learn about maybe they have a um the beginning of of uh dementia like they want to know how can they get this how can they uh, be better how can they how can they get better and just taking a look at a snapshot of that flame that's just burning right there they can kind of see where they're where they're at and and a really cool thing is at the bottom is a five day average and at the top is the last 24 hours so if somebody looks at it they can see this is how they've been trending for five days and then all of a sudden this flame may be something positive or negative and then they can talk about it yeah and then also you know it's, they can see it the staff people can see it, their family members can see it. So um, it's a holistic approach, I guess, 360 care. And hopefully it will help the individual and it'll help the staff and the family members too. And then our, our virtual pal, Roscoe, as time goes on, he's just going to be more and more um, as a companion type technology where hopefully one day he can actually sit and have a full conversation, but alert the staff, talk to, you know, he can really be part of their, he can be a friend and also part of their health care. That's so cool. What I love about the flames 
is that it really can be in the control in a sense of the person themselves that they really can see very easily because of the visual that you use kind of where they are and they can determine where they want to go in a sense with the support yeah. of their care partners and their family members to help get them there because they can see it too. I'm so excited to see this at the conference. Yeah. Well, wait to see, you know, and a part of it too is, is like if you, if you're not given something visually, then you may not know that, that maybe you're missing a step or maybe there, there's some things that you could be doing that are better and to be able to reinforce that because people for the most part want to feel better. They, but sometimes you don't know how, like, unfortunately this whole world that we're working in is not common sense anymore. You know, it's not just, Oh yeah. I, I, I'm like when my grandma really got heavy in dementia and I would come in and, and with no looking on the internet or anything, just myself, you know, I tried to do the best I could, but in reality, I wasn't doing the best I could because I didn't understand what I should be doing. And it just made me upset. Like, I don't know how many times she said, don't, why don't you put the depends on, you know, or she walks out of the bathroom with it on her head, you know, just, yeah. just things. So, yeah. yeah, it's so true. Well, this is very exciting. You know, I love the fact I feel like remember stuff keeps pushing, keeps pushing the envelope. And that's what I feel like this is as well. And even, you know, you talking about Roscoe having that, you know, full conversation with someone, I think you're going to get there because you keep pushing it to make things yeah. better and especially make things better for all of us as we grow older. Yeah, it will. And he'll help with the turn also. He will be the one like um, feces, uh, the part of the flame that maybe needs some adjustment. He will try to direct them in a, in a pathway that helps, you know, change that. It could be the mood part. It could be the cognition part. It could be the activity part. So we're really excited about it. And uh, you saw it here first. Yeah, you're the first one outside the company to see it. So this is going to be at the conference, though. This so will be at the conference. And we yeah. actually have seven pretty major releases that we haven't talked to anybody about just because we've been working heads down on uh, things. And plus, you know, when you work with, um, we're working with IU on on part of the AI stuff and it, it just takes time. Like we think it's, you know, you double the time, then you go, let's triple it. You still have to double it somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially these days, it seems. It does. That's for sure. Well, great. Well, yeah. thank you so much for hanging out with us and being part of our show. Thank yes, you thanks. for having me. It's been a pleasure and I can't wait to see you in Denver. <laughs> We'll no, be we there soon. We, just we a few weeks. There. And um, yeah, thank you so much for spending a few minutes. I know you have a busy schedule. You got a lot coming up and uh, we're looking forward to being there. Can't wait to see you in person and everybody else. And you guys all come check out this video. And if you have the time, come to Denver. It is uh, this month, the 27th through the through the 30th. It is that I, I don't want to mess it up. It's the new culture of aging conference um, put on by Pioneer Network and the Greenhouse Project. Please all come and learn something and let's all spend some time together and make this a better place for the ones who cared for us so long. Good deal. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye.